Yes, it's another edition of uh, Public Conscience on Radio. I am Chukudu Kuliubaja. And let us remind you that Public Conscience on Radio is produced by the Progressive Impact Organization for Community Development, Primorg. And of course, support comes from MacArthur Foundation to make it happen. Today, I have the privilege of presenting alongside Adobe Obiabumo. Thank you so much for joining us. And let me say that because it remains topical, we are continuing our inquiry into the cost of governance in Nigeria. Question still is, how can it be reduced? And when we talk about the cost of governance, we stretch it to all cadres of government, whether it is the executive, legislature, or even the, exec- the judiciary. And we have invited the president of the Civil Liberties Organization, CLO, Iu Akariga, to join us to discuss this topic. Welcome to Public Conscience. Good morning, everyone. We must tell you that he is also the Abuja Bureau Chief of the Guardian newspapers. We'll be talking to him and he'll be answering a lot of questions there. Before we talk to him uh, concerning the first question we're asking him, let us remind you, as the program rolls on, that our WhatsApp number is 0902-265-6167. It enables you to send us messages even as we talk to our guests here. And the first question we'll be asking him today is, uh, is there something that can be done to take down the cost of running this huge governance we have in Nigeria? Nigeria is running on a humongous uh, expenditure by a handful of uh, politicians, those who have uh, ascribed to themselves the responsibility of managing the affairs of the country. Um, I say this because in the first, first and foremost, um, there have been issues about, the, about transparency in our elections, which presupposes that even those who have found themselves in the corridors of power today are not properly elected by, by, by the Nigerian people. So to that extent, I argue that um, they have arrogated to themselves those powers. Now, having said that, now when we have three layers of government in Nigeria, we have the executive, we have the legislature and the judiciary. The, the, the 2019 budget, for example, is uh, around 9.7 trillion, about 9 trillion naira. Out of this amount, um, you have the executive copying close to, close to um, 1.8 trillion of that amount. And then it trickles down along those lines. You have um, the legislature also copying so, so much uh, you just heard what uh, the Senate President, I'm mean, uh, said. Of course, he was being economical with the truth. He said the salary is 750,000 naira. But we do know that uh, every month, the average take home, including allowances of a Nigerian senator, is uh, about 13.5 million. That is, um, each up to 14 million naira for one senator. And there are 109 in the Nigerian Senate. And you have 360 members in the House of Representatives. Now, don't forget, all of these people have their aides, special assistants, special advisors, legal drafters, all kinds of individuals. They are all paid salaries and allowances. Yes. Now, the percentage of the, the, of people in the executive, the legislature, and of course the judiciary, all of them are doing essential jobs, no doubt, no doubt about that. But out of these three layers of government, I think the ones that are really working is the judiciary. Yeah. Now, Would you call them the ones that are also well funded? No, now they are the least even funded. The judiciary is the least funded. How much does the judge take home? So. A judge, well, I want to disclose their salary here so that it doesn't uh, become my age. Because I'm speaking it's not going to be subjudice. Yeah, There's well, no it, court case going on. Let me say this. You have mentioned how almost ridiculous it is to talk about um, $750,000 being somebody's salary. We know that the allowances that the legislators give to themselves actually enable... A senator to take 13.5 million naira home on a monthly basis oh, yes. we're not talking quarterly oh, yes very good the question we ask is this there's been a lot of hue and cry why is it that in spite of all the noise everyone seems to be making about the home gas amounts the seeming impunity goes on nobody's addressing taking it down don't be surprised somebody could actually be arguing about taking it up why does it continue unabated 
Well, it will because uh, first and foremost, the Nigerian political system is skewed, is skewed against the against the Nigerian people. Why is it so? Um, it is a republic run, man, run and managed by very wicked oppressors. That, that is the right language to use. Um, we have people who do not have any form of pity on the toiling masses of Nigerians. Just last year, for, for about eight, nine months, you saw all the debate and the conversation around a national minimum wage of 30,000 naira. That is shameful. So, but, so this is the ruling class that wants to appropriate and arrogate to themselves all the resources and the powers that the country can ever give to anyone. While living, as we speak, Nigeria is close to 200 million people. So this class of rulers, all of them put together, they're not up to one million. The executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, they're not up to one million. So the remaining 200, the remaining 199 million people are left to roast to suffer and to languish in abject poverty. You asked, if, you asked a question initially, how can we bring the cost of governance down? First and foremost, when President Muhammadu Buhari was, um, was campaigning in 2015 for, to, to, to become president of Nigeria, the first thing he said, he said it was not to bring the cost of governance down. We have seven presidential years. I remember the president said that he was going to sell four. That thing is just enough for the president you know, to, 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 to do his work. But the president has never sold one, as we speak. He keeps the seven uh, presidential just to himself, and they are acquiring more. Fleet of cars, the president has not re uh, reduced his aid. I, I think he loaned out separate. two or three, you know, I think so. He did what? I think he loaned out two or three for other uh, uh, people to use. The transparent, if he loaned out, the word it should, loan, should be made the, public. The, the word loan means that there is a benefit coming in. No, I'm using loaned, you know, in, in, he gave in out, quotes. He gave out to a country, yeah. I think um, one of these uh, West African countries also, to support, uh, I think, their president. How do you do that when your country is languishing? Today, Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. That presupposes that every Nigerian is a poor man or poor woman. Right? In fact, living on 30,000 naira minimum with $200 is unimaginable, it's unthinkable that anybody could survive on that kind of money. So, but first and foremost, we have to, if we want to pull down the cost of governance in this country, we start with the executive. I've been told that uh, the president actually gave out, you know, uh, some to the Air Force. At that, your question. Why is the initiative of reducing costs not coming from those who are getting the bogus allowances that Nigeria tends to frown on? Why has it become catch me if you can? It will. You, you, you. Who are those that will um, push the law to cut down uh, the humongous wages that uh, the, the ruling class is earning at the moment? It is the, le it is the legislation. We have a bicameral legislature. We have the National Assembly and the, sorry, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Now, he who benefits from a system, you can't also ask that same person, all right, to debrief himself. To unbundle himself. So it will take the sovereign will, the sovereign power of the Nigerian people to put pressure, enormous pressure on the on the National Assembly to start with, all right, uh, that uh, they, they cut down on the humongous allowances and salaries that they earn for themselves. It is going to be a Herculean task to get that done because one, whether you like it or not, the place has become very, very attractive. You have a situation where governors, once they are done with eight years, the next uh, part of call where they want to best is the National the Assembly. Not even the House of Reps, they go straight to the Senate. And of course, that is the upper chamber of uh, the legislature, the National leg the, the national Parliament. We are in trouble in this country, whether we like it or not. Uh, the ruling class is not about uh, um, ready to give up what they are enjoying. At the you are eminently positioned to talk about the benefits we can derive. If we do, take down the cost of governance. What are those things you want to tell Nigerians that we can gain as a people if we take down the cost of governance so that other sectors do not quite suffer? What, what, what are the gains we can get? Yeah, for example, if you look at a uh, senator thinking about uh, uh, um, how much now that is um, uh, every month you, you take about um, 13.5 million. million naira. Okay. Multiply that by 
by 190 senators, for example. Assume you want to want to be generous, just cut that into two. 13, if you if you divide 13 by 2, that is Plus going to give you about uh, 6.5 6 or so, or so 6.3. Now, you multiply that around and by, by 109, that could build you a fantastic consulting hospital in one region, all right? Now, that is even, if you do that in one month, take all the money for 109, 30 point something million. Now, you, you could do that in six months. You could build a consulting hospital in the six geopolitical zones. That is just one small example. You, you, you trickle that down to the national, to the House of Representatives, where you have 360 members. Cut the allowances and salaries into half. That could build modern schools. Modern schools, all right? Now, you go to the, to, to the executive, for example, where you have the president, the vice president, you have all oh, the charts of aids and all that. Take out all the aids. What are they doing? Now, you also have the ministers. You have a minister, you have a minister of state, and all of them have uh, aids, assistants. Cut all of those allowances. We could build better roads for our citizens. We could, we could have better universities. We won't have... A, we won't have, we won't have uh, young Nigerians going to Republic of Benin, Cameroon, Ghana, to go and acquire university education. People will sit back in this country and will acquire good education. And of course, we could create jobs for our people. We could create, we, we could, we could uh, revitalize the moribund uh, uh, industries that we have that are shutting down for churches and worship centers. All right, this country has become very religious as a people. Our, 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 our physical appearances are religious, very hard. It's desperately uh, wicked. So that is why... You, you, you don't want to go the path of my friend who no. tells me that Nigerians are godish, not godly. That's not fair. That is true. That is the That's position. not fair. That, I keep fighting that, with him when he says no, it. No, but that is the truth. Nigerians are godish, but not godly. I, I agree with that. Whoever said that, I agree with him. So, but the point here is that we are, we are negotiating a sad bend. A tragic bend in the history of this country. The reason why Nigerians voted for the current president is that the, the ruling party, the APC, promised to do things differently. But I'm sure Nigerians are not saying Maybe that. they still have uh, time to do things differently. Ada has a, a question for you. Nigerian politicians seem to be united for once when it comes to what they get in office. Why is that so? It is because uh, it, it is a, conglomer a conglomeration of uh, an oppressive ruling class. All right? Um, if you look at how they even come into office, the nomination forms of their political parties, which ordinary Nigerian can purchase those forms? So that is where it starts from. So it is um, best of the same feathers flocking together. Once, unfortunately, the ordinary Nigerian do not understand that we, these are a class of people that are hell bent on promoting uh, prebender politics politics of servitude among themselves while enslaving the majority of the people. They will not ever, ever disagree amongst themselves. And they keep getting away with it. And they will because uh, why they will is that they exploit our fault lines. They exploit religion, they exploit ethnicity to keep us divided while we are quarreling amongst ourselves about who is attending what religious center, who is speaking what language. Of course, they are smiling to the banks with their loot. Look at that. They exploit exactly. our fault line. So the earthquake yes. continues. Okay. Ada, you're giving us the lines to call now because it's yeah. time actually to begin to take your calls. The Remember that you are the ones that really make this program smoke give out that happy, you know, ambience. So we're giving out the numbers to you again so that you can be part of the program and make it go the normal way. Ada, please, can we hear them? The WhatsApp number is 0902-265-6167. That's great. And please remember, all we need to hear is your name, then your contribution. Please, let's make it happen now. Hello? Hello. Your name, please? My name is Peter. Please go on with your contribution. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the your, your guest there is very, very right. Um, Nigeria, uh, as, as, as what I believe is that we are not ready for a change yet. We are still enjoying the suffering. The, the issue is that you can't ask the person you are accusing to uh, spite himself. 
Well, we're talking about the remuneration of um, of the National Assembly members for a long time. It took it took a long time before we were able to get a glimpse of what they are earning. We actually we, we actually talked about the National Assembly members because they make the laws and they are the ones who can change things. Otherwise, the kind of allowances that happen in the presidency, you don't even know what they are. The minister and his train as well. Yeah. So, um, it's high time that Nigerians should unite and forget about ethnicity, uh, religious uh, divide and uh, what have you. The northern youth you still see in the southern youth, oh, those people are southern and we are northerners. Um, the Christian is seeing the other religion, oh, uh, those are Muslims, we are Christian, and, and all, all these things. They, they divide us, and these people are taking on due advantage of it. The onus is on us as citizens. Okay. To decide, okay. To decide and take a, a, a decide on one front and move against these few people, just a few percentage of the whole popul populace About is doing is putting us our transform. You understand? So it's high time for the citizens to take action. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. For your uh, well, we, we, we pray the action is talking about is not force of arms because we still have to be orderly about it. Hello. Hello. I'm Mr. Chikolo calling from Airport Road. Okay, please go straight to yes. the point. Yes, you see, I am I am very much interested in your discussion. Your guests have spoken very well, but the problem we have in this country is winner takes all. You see somebody talking from the very viewpoint of an opposition. The moment he gets into the government, he begins to sing a different song. You see, the moment we own up our country, believing that we don't have any other country except Nigeria, that is when things begin to work. But for as it were today, Nigeria is nobody, you know, wants to hold Nigeria as an entity that should benefit everyone. This is the problem we are having. We don't love this country called Nigeria. Everybody is just doing things the way he is, the way he will benefit one way or the other. Not having the mind of patriotism, and that is very bad. It's Th very bad for our country. Thank and you. If we don't change from it, we are going to end up in a very disastrous. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. He's giving the impression mm. that we are just bleeding this Hello, town. Hello, please, your name Good and morning, your contribution. My name is Adi Umi Daniel, but uh, where I would like to disagree with you, when you are talking that they should plan the salary of uh, this uh, so-called National Assembly into it's not even into Caesar. If we can even say, out of 100%, they didn't give them 1%. What are they even do? I used to say this, before democracy, how many of them can boast of 100,000 in their bank account? I remember in 1998, all these people that we are hearing their name now, Honorable Senator, uh, 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 Distinguished Senator, House of Red Member, where are they? Where are they before? What are they doing for living? Look at people who are, who are working here. How much they are they paying workers? Many of them now, their children are living abroad. They are still in abroad. We should hear how we can get one point. Just like what you people are saying, the caller before me said, until we get one point. These people, you are talking about them that they should do this to make this law. They will not make the law. It's like if somebody who is killing any woman who is what he will hear or she will not like me they think this word pass his head. That's how it is. Remember, me. we are talking about the suicide law. Mr. Uh, Dewumi and the corruption law that whoever steals Nigerian money should be killed. Mr. So Dewumi. Nobody they will say we should not go there. Uh, uh, Mr. Dewumi. You also hear that in America, many senators they don't have iron roof on top of their own head. In Nigeria, they have a board member that is going to office with the bicycle. But so look at Nigeria. Somebody who has no name, we don't know their father, they are not Bilonia. Because we allow the system to be like that. Thank the you. people who make this law, they are the one who cause to put us into this mess. Thank you. I wanted to tell him that uh, one uh, person actually said that we are partly responsible. We make it system. extensive for the Nigerian politician to get into position. He gets in there. The first thing that occurs to him is to recoup his money. I, I needed to ask him how we can cure that among the polity as well. Okay? Yeah. Let's take more calls. There's another call in. Yes. My name is Emmanuel. I'm calling from New Nyanya. Okay. Please. Your um, we can always keep on discussing this topic, even aside um, among um, my peers. And I always give only one solution. If we want to be sincere in this country, for example, 
there we have about 200 million people in this country. So, if one person can keep 100 billion, what do you need 100 billion for? Where majority of the people, but it's, it's an ego something. Everybody wants to be going up with sirens so that uh, they will know that. Uh, I don't know what is mentality issue. It's, I don't know. We have so many courses in Nigeria universities, but I don't know the impact they are giving out as uh, output. Because it's just a matter of I want to feel I'm the senator, I'm the governor, whenever I'm passing, the, the rules should be clear. There should be equal rights, equal opportunity, equal everything for everybody. Okay. Because by the time you are not the son of uh, maybe a traditional ruler, and then today, like that was our guest that is speaking there, today you give an opportunity, will he have the real power to really change that law? That is a major issue, because most people who really speak for this, when they get there, they can't respect the change. But everybody cannot go to National Assembly to respect the change. No problem. He is going to have to re respond later. Uh, for now, he's a journalist. And then he has to push the pen. Uh, we don't know what will happen when he becomes somebody's aide. He will have time to uh, 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 talk about that. There's another call coming in. Hello. Your name, Thank please. You. Your name and your contribution. I'm Mr. Mr. Joel from Nasarawa State. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank especially the West. Okay. That man is a very good man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank These you. are the type of people we have to have in this country. I said, the Bible said, when the righteous is on the throne, they both rejoice. But when the wicked man is on the throne, people will suffer. Well, God will continue to help us. Sir, we need you. Go extra mile to make sure that those people that are receiving such amount, that amount should be removed. So that the other ones will be coming to the masses. It's okay. You too. Uh, we just take this call and uh, we go to. Uh, uh, is there a call coming in? Okay, we take this call at that. Thereafter, you read our WhatsApp messages for us. Hello. Your name, please. I'm John, talking from Wabulana. Okay, sir, your contribution. My contribution is that the major three enemies of Nigeria are greed, ethnicity, and religion. Greed is that everybody wants to catch all. Ethnicity is that even when we see what is right, because it's from my tribe, we want to defend it. And their religion is that those who claim to be religion, who are using religion are not even true to their religion. Other Muslim or Christian, they only use it as a cover to get what they want and put the masses in trouble. We only pray that God will help the nation that these three enemies will be handled. Nigeria can move forward. Thank you, Thank John. You. Thank, Thank you, you. John. I, I um, can we take now. the WhatsApp messages now. The first message is from Lagi Agbas from Area 1, and he says, Why would Nigeria become poverty capital of the world when the only giant was misappropriated out of the continent? The former first lady, Patience Jonathan, pegged 30 million US dollars for her medication, as reported, even when her office was unconstitutional. The former Minister of Finance, who was coordinating the Ministry of Economy, told us that they paid 17 whooping billion naira to the legislators before considering passing the budget and none of lawmakers in quote debunked the allegation up to date. We also have another one from Mwabu Ifani and he says the foundation of our democracy is laid on a sinking sand. God bless our guests but 30,000 is less than $100. Our leaders have no vision for our nation. If Buhari cares, others will follow. And another one is from Lawrence from Gwagwalada, and he says, I totally agree with your guests. The problem we have in this country are religion, ethnicity, etc. And our leaders understand this and use these vices against the Nigerian populace. That's great. Um, we, apart from the messages you're sending onto our uh, WhatsApp line, we also have this strict talk we usually engage to make it rosier, bumpier, and m much more worth your while. We went to the street and we also talked to some people there. What they are earning, is it legal in the first place? They just come up and start paying themselves. 
because they should have it, where is it that is written in any law that they should be paid such allowances we don't know whether it is legal or not the method in which they used to put that allowance that is the way they should use to reduce it having this range of national assembly is too much for the country you have the national assembly you have the house of representatives we need leaders that we lead in that very area. We don't need the two as we don't need the two national, we don't need the two assemblies there. They are just consuming out of our budget without anything being rendered to the country. Because they are not there for the country. They are there for their own interests. We are not developing, we are not moving forward. Let me question you now. When they give them the money, the, the money doesn't circulate, doesn't regulate. Just actually within them, with their children, with their family. If only they can receive 100 million a day and they will work definitely for us, I don't think it will face any challenge. The ordinary Nigerians that are even supposed to be getting, you know, some amount, like I, I heard the minimum wage that it was supposed to even increase. I don't think they have even implemented it yet. So collecting 13.5 million era, it's, it's outrageous. There should be that willpower in the parts of the decision makers to reduce the cost of governance. Those that are in authority should cut down in their expenses from, from the presidency down. Oh, that's great. The street talk is also very important to us, just as the calls you make while the program goes on and the messages you send, you know, online. Um, one of the people who talked to us on the street mentioned something which you talked about, the bicameral legislature. Now, the presidency ensures that you run that way. Now, wh what would happen if we decide to go the way of Britain, for instance? Would that help us reduce the cost of governance? But that would mean dumping the president presidential system. What do you say to that? Well, basically, our problems are almost self-inflicted. Uh, first and foremost, we have a constitution that we didn't make for ourselves. The preamble of the constitution says, we, the people of Nigeria, make for ourselves this constitution. Who is saying this? At what time do Nigerian people sit down to ever say that they are making for themselves a document called a constitution? You're not calling that, it a blackmail document. So, 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 yeah, You're is, saying we didn't participate. Uh, absolutely. It was foisted on us. It was foisted How do we undo a it? Class, a tiny class of military uh, junta at the time, um, the Babangidas, the Abdusalams, the Abashas, and all, they sat down and then convoluted this document called the constitution. Oh, they, they, now, they, we they, have, now we have been making effort over time to try and pass the 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 fourth the fourth lines of the constitution to see whether it can it can take a semblance of a working document. But you see, for any serious effort to rebuild this country to occur, we must first and foremost dump this document called the constitution. We just have to dump it wholeheartedly. Now the the Buhari, uh, the National Assembly, they are beneficiaries of this this convoluted illegality called the constitution. They are not going to dump it. It is going to be the Nigerian people who will insist that they no longer want this constitution. Jonathan made an effort through the 2014 National Conference to get Nigerians together from all walks of life to try and agree on something that looks like a constitution. But you see what happens, those who are benefiting from the current disorderliness in this country ensured that that document never saw the light of day. So for President Buhari, this is his last term in office, all right? And he is giving the impression as if he's going to get serious. I'm beginning to see signs, we're talking about state police, um, independence of, uh, that is autonomy for local government, local for government. judiciary across the states. If that, ha if that happens, he has already signed The that local governments are getting their funds directly already. No, no, they are not yet getting it directly because my interaction with some local government okay. they, they, they confirmed that they have not gotten no anything. Better. No money has hit But the process is on. The process is on. I think that is going to be from the Reve Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission. They are the ones who are going to work out all the modalities. Oh, that's great. Yes, and of course, you know, this budget has to be passed for, for the first line charge to go to them directly. Oh, that's so it. these are also still working. Procedural matters. We are, making, we are taking some, some steps 
towards that. Now, that is, those are infinitesimal steps. We need to go a whole hog to unbundle this uh, within system called Nigeria. All right? Because the Nigerian people are suffering. As I'm talking to you here, you need to go, you need, I go home, I go to the village. People are suffering. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's as terrible as that. Yes, now, but I, what we asked you really is, you, you, st you talked about the Nigerian constitution are uh, needing to redo it. Yeah. When we w do it again, where do we take it to, to make it more cost-saving? That's the point. What, what, where do we take, take it to? If Nigerians will say to the look, uh, we have people who say power does not exist in a vacuum, that if you unbundle this whole thing, who will uh, bring the new constitution into fruition? Now, don't forget, under President Jonathan, when he was vice president and we lost our Maibo president, uh, Yaradua, you know, there was some kind of vacuum. There was a lot of discussion around the issue. And this same National Assembly invoked the doctrine of necessity. So the sovereign power of the Nigerian people can, can instigate, can evolve a doctrine of necessity. Say we want to exist in a vacuum for three months. Put up a caretaker kind of arrangement in place. You, you, you. Okay. Hold forth while we, we perfect. So you're talking order. about the process of yes. making the constitution yes. all over. Yes. I, I am saying when we do make it, yes. how do we make it cheaper for us to run a government and spare up funds we can for very important yeah, we things? We can still do a presidential system of government. Oh, it can still work? We can still, yes. Without our losing a lot of money? We can do presidential system of government. The president is there. They define clearly, you, uh, Mr. President, you cannot have more than six aides. All right, six as assistants, six aides. All right, so a, we a, a, second, a second car attracts then, a charge. Yes, then uh, the ministers, one minister. It is not also impo important. We must have thirty-six ministers. We have six geopolitical zones. Have uh, six ministers representing each of the six geopolitical zones. All right, and then you can have uh, ministerial advisors across to advise uh, the ministers. General no pruning. Yes, Prune so you things down. You cut down like that, and up to the states to the governors and everything, you see that we're going to save a lot of money. And we must, we must, it is a priority, ensure that we have power in this country. Okay. We must have power, we must have steel. The two steel industries in Ajakuta and Alaja must come to fruition so that we can build our cars, we can build our, anything that, have, that is dependent on steel, we can build it. There's, and then we must be able to refine petroleum products. These three key issues, steel, power and ability to ref locally refine petroleum products. Any president that can do this for this country, I'm sure we are right. We are the Domesticating right. the process of production. I Most hear we have more calls. calls coming in. Hello? Hello? Yeah, please go on. You're crystal clear. Okay. This is Bakar from uh, Yedel. Go on, Bakar. Yes, what I really want us to do, just like uh, our resource is talking about the first thing is let us go and say this constitution we don't want it. It's not working to our people. It's, it's, it's not in a, in a fighting mood. We all know that it's not working for over a decade now. So well, let's reject it and go for the parliamentary system of government and then the region is repositioned. Like you said, six ministers from the region is okay. Then uh, if we want to spread around, go to uh, uh, senior advisor, whatever, whatever, to, to achieve this and that. And then, let's cut off all this money, uh, billions that are being wasted. So that the whole money come down to projects, to masses, to salaries, to uh, uh, capital projects that can enhance the blast of the mother. The key security and all this uh, trouble we come down. If we continue this way, we are on, we are on a dead gunpowder. That's not very Bakari, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Another call is coming in. Hello. Hello. Before we take that, um, the WhatsApp number is 0902-265-6167. That's 0902-265-6167. That's our WhatsApp line. Means you can drop a message as well. There's a call coming in. Go on, please. Your yeah, name? My name is Dara to call for Abuja. Go ahead. Yes, um... I don't think there's the, I don't think there's a problem with the system. I think there's a problem with our accountability because a lot of people choose to be ignorant. Not that they're actually ignorant, but they choose to be ignorant of certain things. We keep hammering and saying, "Oh, our legislators gulping money. How much is our legislators taking? 150 billion. How much is our budget? 8.3 trillion. That is less than 10 percent of even the budget." Yeah, but we are looking at the number of people taking the billions. 
compared to the millions that are practically going around are around there hungry. You are complaining of a senator collecting 13.5 million. Yes. When a DC of a presidential is taking 16 million for extra code. What are we not saying? So it's like, all. Seriously. So it's all around there. What are we not saying? And then in this senator, how long does it take his year? Yeah, 13.5 million. And yet everybody is, oh, oh, oh. We, we are not focusing on the real problem, which is what? The lack of accountability. Okay. Whereby if a DG is taking 16 million to go for extra code, that he's traveling out of a country. I mean, come on. That. <laughs> And yes, we keep, we ask why this problem will keep reoccurring. Secondly, the people that will come out and say, oh, why are they taking 13.5 million? You collected 2,000 naira from him to go and vote. What were you thinking when you were voting him? Exactly. Because that, if that's the point. Then, then where we now have people that will be sitting in that legislature on principle. We will have people that will be sitting in offices on principle. Well, you collected money from these people to go and vote. And now you are complaining that they are taking your money. Are you kidding? Okay, I, I, our, our guest is actually disagreeing with that. He's going to talk about it later. Uh, we thought that I the hope people... He does. I hope he he's does. going to have to talk about it before we round up, okay? Another call is coming in. Thanks so much. Hello? Hello? Yeah, my name is Engineer Semi. I'm calling from Cuba. Engineer Semi. All right. Um, fantastic topic. You know, while... You know, there's this thing that why you point your finger, one of your five fingers at someone... The other four is pointing at you. Okay. Have we looked at the executive? Have we looked at all the medical trips that we don't know how much it is? How much can we say goes to the executive? And how much comes out of the executive? Now, while how much we have they pay to the executive is not so much of a problem like we're making it. Because, hey, the fact is, if our investment or our budget are directed at things that are productive, we can pay off all of these people and more, and the country will be living better than we are currently. Now, what, why am I saying this? What investment have we done in Ajebuta still? This subsidy issue and story and all the hula bula, have we built one or two refineries? Can't we build it on contract base and exchange it with our crude oil? What will happen to us? Or will do borrowing? We'll go and borrow money and put the Northeast Development, 10 billion, approved, gone. Where's the development? We can't see it. Government is saying we're going to start building ranches all over the place so that cattle will be there. Rwanda have more cattle than us, times three of what we have put together. Botswana have more than we have. They export to European countries and earn foreign exchange from their cattle. How much do we gain from the cattle here, apart from losses of life, left, right, and center, and impoverishment? All our farmlands are we taken over by what? Cattle. And they'll say it hurts men and they'll kill farmers, take over their land. You know, why we treat these things with kid laws and then point our fingers at only one direction? Okay, this is why I'm earning so much money. Which for me, hello, if you want these things to change, it is not this people that will change it. Look at Hong Kong, what has happened. It's an example. Look at Georgia. It's another example. Look at Czechs. Czechs. Um, Czech. The people are on the street protesting for certain decisions that are not come to it that that government is trying to pass. Engineer I, I Semi, you, thank you yes. so much. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you so much. Engineer Semi just said that um, we tend to have a consumer base. There is no thought for production that that's part of our problem. I, I agree with him completely. And then he was able to cite um, a study global examples of where the, the, the power of the people is prevailing on those who are presiding over the affairs to, 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 to conform with the expectation of the people. I also situate this problem around how we even got our independence as Nigerians. Our independence appeared to be, to be handed over to us on a platter of gold, and that is why I think we are complacent, we are docile, we are sleepy all the time, even on, even on our rights. But that's why I agree with him completely when he cited the Georgia, the Georgia example, Czech Republic, Hong Kong, uh, the Hong, Hong, Hong Kong, for example, the, the, the head of the Hong Kong government is talking about extraditing uh, uh, citizens of Hong Kong to, to mainland, mainland China. China, you know, to face... And the people are saying no. And then they all poured onto the street. And you can see that they've maintained that consistently for, for weeks. And the process even got even suspended. In, yeah, even in Sudan. But Look at what, what's happening in, in Sudan. You know, a lot, a lot is going on. The people have been on the street going to three months. You know, against uh, the military. 
So Nigeria, if people think that it is a contest between the north and the south, or between one region or one faith against the other, and that is why we are being consumed, there must be a kind of mental ideological uh, conglomerate of people must come together you know, to agree on what they really want as a people. Hunger does not discriminate against your religion, your ethnicity, or when you are hungry, you are hungry. When you are poor, you are poor. And that is it. We must, as a people, come together to rebuild this country. The common people of Nigeria must come together to rebuild this country. Otherwise, we'll be swiveling around the circle, arguing amongst ourselves while the ruling class will continue to dig in. Let me tell you, the, the point that is made even at the National Assembly, yes, to some extent, I agree with them, but we are talking generally about the, the, about the strategies for cutting down on the cost of governance. So, uh, and identify the three layers of government that it has to come from the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Everybody must make a sacrifice. You do not say, for example, that the man who is earning less than $100, 30,000 naira, should be the one making the sacrifices. The federal government talks about uh, expanding the tax net, you know, to capture more people, to come and pay tax. Yes. The tax net, from what I looked at the last time I checked with FIROS, it is, it, is, it is catching more poor people in Nigeria into the country, the, the poor working class people. Well, if you're why earning money those, at all, you have to pay government yeah, salary. So, so why those who are earning, the, who, are, who are stealing the petrol dollars, who are looting the country dry, mm. they are escaping the, the tax nets. Mm. So what kind of country is that? So the point we are making here is that there must be co a concerted effort by all Nigerians, first and foremost, the, the so-called faith-based leaders must tell their people that it is time to begin to take their destiny in their own hands. Because even if you do not do that, that is why you are seeing insecurity everywhere, kidnapping, banditry, and all that and all that. Somebody talking about They have to cartoons. tighten their belt and work. Yeah, somebody talking about cartoons. Because there, much, there, there's no food for the, what, for the idle what, man. What is the, what is the uh, gross annual earning from cattle in this country? Okay. Cattle are driving farmers away from I their will farms. give you time for closing comments. It's very important it now that, that um, Ada visits our uh, social media platform so that we can get some messages. Adobe, please. Our first mail is from Hamzi, and he says, the executives, legislature, and judiciary should cut down their allowances. Political office holders should end same as stipulated by the civil service structure. And our last mail is from Peter from Karu, and he says, Until Nigerians eschew tribalism, religious sentiments, political cronies, and vehemently demand for financial discipline from our political leaders, corruption will still be the order of the day. Many thanks for your mails. Keep them coming through info at primeorg.org or call 0902-265-6167. Like, subscribe, and drop your comments on our YouTube channel at Primeorg TV. That's a great one. We want Facebook as well, Twitter. You will mention those ones. Okay. At all official Primeorg. Every one of them is at official, official Primeorg. Primeorg. Thanks so much. Closing comments now, Mr. Herrera. Uh, uh, now, if Nigerians truly want to make progress, you're saying that they must come together. Absolutely. But we are saying, well, how? what is the process of organizing to say no? Definitely, you're not asking for an insurrection. You're not asking for people to be disorderly in saying this is how we want it. How uh, does that get done so that the people have one voice? You see, um, those who make peaceful change impossible makes violent change inevitable. We're not going the violent no, way. Yeah, we are not going the violent way. But the point is, uh, there must be some form of disorderliness to get order. All right? If we continue to say that uh, we want peace, all this, nobody is talking about coming to upset the government and do all of that. But the point is, people must be able to exercise fully their civic rights of coming to the street to say, look, enough is enough. All right, so if we can get enough mass of the people saying we disagree with this specific government policy, I'm sure government will listen. It needs to take out from the constitution through an execu executive be one state of origin, local government of origin, uh, religion, and when you are filling forms, this is very prevalent. Okay. They give you forms to fill, uh, specifying all of these things. These are fault lines, as far as I'm concerned that is uh, further dividing... We have to work on them. Uh, yeah, we have to work, take them out of our country okay. so that Nigerians can begin to... They can they can be proud of their country. Just merely, I'm a Nigerian, oh, I'm resident, maybe state of residence would okay. make more sense. Okay? So when we take all of that, I will begin to clean the system gradually and then he needs to take uh, the border step by saying, for example, I'm cutting my salaries, 
um, the legislature, we are also going to do this. Uh, the judiciary, we are going to do this. We are going to save more money um, so that we can take Nigerians out of poverty. Um, he also said he was not going to do foreign travel, medical travel. He's doing that. He needs to stop that, build hospitals that he can attend within the country. I'm sure the all list public goes on. should attend uh, hospitals in this country, attend common ho general hospitals that the ordinary Nigerians attend. We did not elect them to go there so that they can fly abroad and Thank access you so much. good medical while Nigerians go to Thank uh, you so much. and hospitals. Thank you so it's much. I wish we can always stretch time, but go we must at a point. And it is really time for public conscience to go on radio to go home. Thank you to Mr. Igo Ekerega. Uh, thanks for coming on Public Conscience. It's always a pleasure. It is uh, my loyalty to Nigeria to always um, ventilate these views. Thank you so much. He's the president of the Civil Liberties Organization and is the Abuja Bureau Chief of the Guardian Newspapers. Uh, that would be Obi Abomo. It's been another outing. Uh, anything for a uh, uh, contributor out there or the listener? Nigerians should try and resist corruption no matter how. Just try. And I can tell you that a public conscience never gets tired of putting on its fighting boots or its broadcasting boots. The mic is always there for us. And the happiness is that we know you're out there, dedicated as usual, loyal to a cause, to this program. Thanks for listening again. We'll do it again next week, God willing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>